Hello students. Today's topic is uh, aerial photogrammetry. Aerial photogrammetry is the science of making measurements from photographs through aerial vehicles. Aerial vehicles means the photographs have taken through the helicopters, aeroplanes, balloons or through the drones also. These are the aerial vehicles. So through this we are going to take the photographs of the earth surface. Sometimes the photographs are taken through the air stations also. Air stations means through remote sensing activity. Uh, here satellites are used. So satellites are having some devices uh, called as sensors, scanners or cameras also and these devices which will take the photos of the earth surface uh, in a large extent so its aerial extent will be very large so these photographs can be used for different applications sometimes the photographs are taken through the ground stations also here the cameras are fixed to the tall buildings it may be a multi-story building uh, or sometimes to the tall towers and uh, the nearby the earth surface features will be captured through that camera and that photographs will be used for some applications uh, if I if we discuss about the application part there are so many applications through the photograph can be possible sometimes if at all uh, it is not able to access some regions for example some hilly regions are there or some valley regions are there it is not possible to go there uh, if I want to see some if I want to do some uh, surveys some topographical survey then it is not an easy task to reach that point so at that point of time if we have some aerial photogrammetry or some aerial photographs then it is very easy to do some kind of surveys so in detail the application part will be discussed in the coming slides let us move on to the next slide that is the uh, introduction part photogrammetry is the science of making measurements on photograph Aerial photogrammetry applies to the measurements of photographs taken from the air. Uh, and there is a one image given in this slide. Uh, this is the aeroplane and uh, there will be a camera and that will capture the earth surface feature. So whatever the feature will be there beneath that aeroplane and that will be captured uh, through that camera. Through the aerial photograph, one can obtain the information about the natural and the man-made features on the earth surface. Uh, the natural features, it may be a soil, vegetation, the water body, etc. For example, there is a one concept called as uh, change detection. Uh, change detection means what is the changes have occurred from year to year. Uh, the example is uh, there is a one photograph of one area which is related to 2010 and the same image or the s uh, image which is clicked of that area in the year 2019 or 20. Then we can able to assess what is the changes happened from 2010 to 2020. So in the 10 years period, what are all the developmental activities have taken place or how much area of the land uh, which is related to a forest which is uh, converted into a a built up land or how much acres of the 
forest land which is converted into agricultural land or how much water body which is uh, converted into a barren land because uh, for developmental activities sometimes some lakes are filled with soil so through the change detection analysis one can able to find out the changes over the years can be possible so aerial photographs nowadays very important for different applications in this slides we are going to discuss the photogrammetric requirements the first one is uh, planning and taking the photographs processing the photographs and measuring the photographs and produce end results planning and taking the photographs uh, in case of aerial photographs and that will be taken through the aeroplanes and uh, a proper planning is required to take the photograph of the particular area uh, if I take the example of remote sensing the remote sensing through the satellites uh, the photographs are taken and uh, these satellites will be launched at a very large height uh, it may be some 1800 kilometers to to a height of 36,000 kilometers uh, but uh, in case of aerial vehicles that is in case of uh, aeroplanes that will not be flying at a very large height therefore flight planning is very important at what height or what is the accuracy which is required for any application 1 kilometer 2 kilometer or 3 kilometer that is very important and at what height I am going to take the photograph if at all the photographs are taken with the great height maybe some 5 kilometer then object which is seen in an image is very small if at all the same photograph which is taken at a 1 kilometer height then object will be large and uh, it is very easy to identify or differentiate second point is that processing the photographs uh, sometimes there may be noise in the images sometimes there is a uh, clouds uh, some dust in the atmosphere while taking the photographs some processing initial processing is required or there are some two images or some four images then we need to merge that images and make it into a single photograph and uh, finally that images image will be used for any applications finally the measuring the photographs measuring the photographs means uh, identifying the objects or locating the points that is called as measuring the photographs measuring sometimes some area calculation will be possible some length calculation will be possible volume calculation will be possible through the photographs finally there is a producing of end results in the way of mapping uh, the best example for that is uh, presently uh, there are some COVID-19 affected zones so they have categorized into three uh, red orange and green so green means there is no uh, covid cases or corona cases orange there are some corona cases there are some ranges will be there and uh, red means it's very highly affected corona cases so if at all i i'll take the entire Karnataka map in that which are all the district which comes under red zone or orange zone or green zone if it is mentioned in different colors it is very easy to identify 
rather than giving the numbers for example uh, Dakshin Kannada the covid the corona cases will be some 30 numbers means it is having some orange zone Udupi there is a green zone so if I give the color then it is very easy to identify therefore the final end result will be in the form of some colors or some buffer zones like that so these are the some requirements of the photogrammetric the broad categories involved in photogrammetric are photogrammetry are uh, first one is uh, quantitative work second one is the qualitative work or it is also called as interpretative work what is that uh, quantitative work means metric photogrammetry involves all quantitative work such as the determination of ground positions distances elevations areas volumes and preparation of various types of maps here determination of ground positions the xy coordinates or latitude and longitude of the point the distance it is in kilometers or in meters elevations that is uh, the height area calculation volume calculation and preparation of various types of maps that is called as quantitative work interpretative or uh, qualitative work means the identification of objects the photo interpretation photographs are analyzed for the purpose of identifying the objects and assessing their significance so in the aerial photographs it is not easy to identify the objects because if the photographs are taken with great height then objects will be very small if the photographs are taken with the small height then the objects will be larger so identification will be very easy therefore uh, in photogrammetry or in remote sensing there are some elements to identify the objects there are some eight elements are there so that will be studied in detail in the next module so these are the the two main categories involved in photogrammetry here some photographs are uh, shown uh, the drones the aer aeroplanes and uh, the aeroplanes are fixed with cameras and it will take the picture and uh, so as the flight which is moving in this direction or in any direction it will take number of photographs uh, it not only contains a single picture it will contains number of images and uh, finally if I want to get a single picture of any place or any region then I need to merge all those pictures here there is a drone and uh, this drone will be attached with some devices it may be a camera sensor scanner etc next we will discuss the advantages of the aerial photographs the first one is uh, photos provide a permanent record of the existing terrain condition at the time the photograph was taken so this is the one permanent record of the existing terrain condition in the future I can refer that photographs and I can able to identify the changes if at all that particular photograph which is there in terms of hard copy or in terms of soft copy then so after some five years or after some 10 years 25 years so what is the changes have taken place that can be observed photos can be used to convey information to the general public and other federal state or local agencies so 
I have given one example on uh, COVID-19 affected areas all over Karnataka and that will be categorized in terms of three zones green orange and red like that some information will be conveyed to the general public in a large extent photos can be used for multiple purposes such as uh, reconnaissance preliminary design environmental etc so to do some reconnaissance survey uh, for example a photograph which is there of uh, some hilly area or some some valley region so it is not possible to go there uh, i want to do some reconnaissance survey or there is a one hydraulic power plant which is going to establish in the future period and at that point of time i want to do some preliminary survey so at that point of time we can use the photos topographic mapping of large areas can be accomplished relatively and at a lower cost when compared to ground survey methods so which is of low cost when compared to the remote sensing activity why because if at all we use drones then which is little cheaper than the other kind of methods or aerial vehicles photogrammetry can be used in locations that are difficult or impossible to access from the ground so it is not possible to go to a particular place then we can use the photogrammetry aerial vehicles to capture the image of that area easy to interpret and understand if any photos are there means it is very easy to identify the objects in that image and it is very easy to understand it so these are the some advantages of the aerial photographs or aerial photogrammetry the next slide is the uh, disadvantages of uh, aerial photographs the first one is the uh, seasonal conditions including weather vegetation and shadows can affect both the taking of photographs and the resulting measurement quality of course it is the uh, one disadvantage demerits of the aerial photogrammetry or the remote sensing also if uh, the atmosphere cons contains some uh, clouds then whatever the picture or photos are taken through the camera that will be uh, covered with this clouds or there is a very thick vegetation or forest which is there then whatever the object which is which is there below the canopy and that is not covered in the photographs there is a one more advan uh, disadvantage and shadow of any object so that is also a disadvantage for example the photos are taken in the city uh, there may be a tall building multi story building of uh, g plus 20 or 50 and its shadow will be falling to the nearby object so and the nearby object will be black because of this because of the shadow of the particular building so it is a one more disadvantage and the ground is not visible in the photograph it can not be mapped that is a disadvantage <laughs> overall accuracy is relative to camera quality and flying height so if the resolution of the camera is very low then it will give you a low quality picture or photograph then uh, flying height is also very important because if the flight which is flying at a great height then the picture quality will be very low less so the flight which is moving in a very small height then picture quality will be high Identification of planimetric features can be difficult or impossible. Example, type of curb and gutter, size of culverts, type of fences and information on signs, etc. For example, the culvert size, uh, the type of fencing which is provided. These minute uh, features 
cannot be possible to extract through the photographs underground utilities cannot be located measured or identified so whatever the features are there below the ground that cannot be identified through the photographs so it is only possible when the objects or any features are there above the ground surface so below the ground it is very difficult and it is not possible also applications of uh, aerial photographs first one is uh, use it to conduct topographical survey or engineering survey that can be possible through aerial photographs for any of the projects example hydroelectric power plant it needs some uh, topographical survey if there is a river which is flowing then which is the good place to construct one dam or any hydroelectric power plant so at that point of time we need the photographs otherwise it is very difficult to uh, exactly locate the any projects any water resources related projects suitable for mountainous and hilly terrain with little vegetation so in case of hilly terrains mountainous regions some surveys are required means it is very easy to do by using aerial photographs change detection analysis in the beginning i have explained about change detection so that will be very easy through the photographs from 2002 to 2010 2010 to 2020 what is the changes that can be possible so how much area of the land which is converted from uh, forest to agricultural forest to built up or forest to barren or agricultural to built up or maybe water body to uh, built up that can be possible through the photographs that is called as change detection analysis used for geological mapping which includes identification of landforms rock types rock structure uh, if at all the photographs are there then we can identify the soil types used in urban and uh, regional planning applications nowadays the smart city concept will be possible through remote sensing activity or through some photographs aerial photographs used in security and uh, strategic planning disaster management natural resource management city models etc the natural resource management and the disaster management example if any natural calamities may be the earthquake or uh, there is a flood then through the photographs it is very easy to estimate the losses in case of flood through the photographs how much area of the land is submerged due to the flood water that can be possible or during earthquake within no time it is possible to estimate the the loss of uh, humans as well as loss of the buildings how much land how much buildings have collapsed due to earthquake or how much area of the land which is submerged due to flood or there may be a uh, forest fire then at that point of time i can ab able to estimate the area of the forest which is uh, which is got fired or which is burnt that can be possible these are the some applications of the photographs